Welcome back to Foul Mouth Fishing. Uh, a lot of you have seen um, one of the newer things to come out of iCast, which is called a Tokyo Rig. It's a punk shop rig that is designed to present your soft plastic bait, or potentially even your live bait, at depth on the bottom of your fishing waters, uh, but in a suspended position where it's not like your typical drop shot. So it's basically a, a wire leader down to weights, with a suspended hook and barrel swivel running on a uh, welded ring. Now, I've tried to get a hold of these. Uh, they're pretty much sold out everywhere I try to go. They're back ordered, by the way, so I'm waiting. But uh, there's a lot of DIY productions out there on how to build these sort of at home. Um, so pros and some cons, but I've come up with a few ways to do it, more than just the standard that you've probably seen everywhere, uh, which is surprisingly for me been more effective and uh, a lot cheaper. But uh, we'll start off with the basics. Uh, what all these rigs have in common, um, you're basically gonna need a couple of basic items. Now, one of those items you can get online is a, um, a spinner wire leader. Uh, it's a, a um, it has a barrel swivel on the top and it's a down wire leader. Stainless steel is probably the best way to go. Uh, the other option for the DIY people is a simple paper clip. Uh, the paper clip that is recommended, my recommendation is a 55 millimeter paper clip. It's a little bit larger gauge. Uh, what you don't want to do is get one of these teeny tiny little paper clips. Uh, that's really not going to be serving your purpose very well. Uh, specifically for the length that you could possibly get out of it is minimal, as opposed to the 55 which gives you a few inches to spare and what you want is a little bit of distance. Uh, some of the DIY productions have shown leads leading down to their weights that actually is detrimental to the hookup. Uh, and I'll explain that as we go on a little later. So pay attention, stay tuned. I'll show the four or five different varieties, uh, different ways to rig this up, and exactly how to do it step by step for the best possible DIY Tokyo rig you've ever seen. So first off, what we're going to start out with is the materials. You're going to need a paper clip. You're going to need whatever favorite weight you're going to want. Uh, I got some tungsten bullet weights. You can use some egg sinkers. You can use barrel sinkers. You're going to need your choice of worm hooks. Uh, a little an off offset shank is uh, or offset hook is probably your best bet. Uh, I'll get to that a little later too. You don't have to use tungsten weights, you can use lead weights, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to need a split ring. I'm gonna hold this, a little split ring. Um, and you could use a barrel swivel, but I actually like to go with a three-way swivel setup. So you can get these at any tackle shop too. Uh, saltwater angler for years, I've used three-way swivels forever and ever and ever. Now, typical setups that are out there. Um, the standard one for the original Tokyo ring, again, is a welded ring. Off of that, they have their worm hook, a barrel swivel, and the down leader. So, if you can see this, you've got that right there. Now, I've substituted with this one the split ring, on the actual Tokyo rig from VMC, it's a welded ring. So this is the standard one, and this is pretty much what everybody's emulated. Um, from this, you just run your weights onto the bottom end, bend this wire up to keep your weight on, and then you can fish this on the bottom. It'll present the bait standing up in current while this is down in the silt or the sand or punching on rocks or bouncing off of rocks as you go. The better way to do this, uh, which gives me a little more confidence, um, because the hook is connected to the O-ring, this hook will bind left and right. You have no play, left or right. So your bait can get caught on things and, and get locked up. Uh, also, using a, a split ring in the center like this, there's a tendency that both the eyelet of the hook 
or the wire leader that you're using to want to run down, in this, this case um, the uh, paper clip, can also get bound where the two wires cross on your split ring, where, this, where it spins around. So what I actually have done in my personal favorite rig setup is this. I've used that three-way swivel system, spun my paper clip directly onto that, and I use these coated paper clips as opposed to the standard stock paper clips, the unpainted ones or the unwrapped ones. Um, paper clips will rust, obviously. Uh, these coated ones last a heck of a lot longer. They're safer for the environment because paper clips have in them zinc and lead and other things um, that you don't really want to shed off uh, for the fish and everything else over time. Um, and then off of the other side, I still use that split ring, but that split ring leads to the hook. So by doing the three-way, you have the ability where your hook can spin freely 180 or 360 degrees, excuse me, all the way around without getting bound up. Your bait is going to be free spinning in the current. It's going to be able to spin in the hook in the fish's mouth. If you're going to catch them on the side of the mouth or at the top of the lip, uh, it gives a little more freedom and less chance of binding up. You're going to tie your line to this empty eyelet on the three-way, which allows your line to not get in twist, as opposed to tying it on the traditional Tokyo rig um, that's supplied from VMC, which would literally get tied straight to the ring, um, or in the DIY ones where it gets tied to this barrel swivel. Now the barrel swivel on the traditional one allows this to spin without line twist, but again, you're still getting the bait hook caught on all this and it, it gets jammed up and I just, I didn't like it. I, I think my, my design here is a little bit more fortuitous for hookups. The other thing that I wanted to put out is um, the DIY people that go out there the main thing you want to remember is to make sure that your down wire sits lower than your hook. And the reason for this is your hookup ratio will drastically be improved if the hook is suspended above the weight. So when you get a hookup on this, if that weight sits in line and it's too short, what's going to end up happening is that weight's going to pendulum up into the fish's mouth and you can actually end up with a situation where that weight will pry the, the hook out of the fish's mouth. So cutting these wires super short, you know, say like, you know, that long, that short, and then you bend it and your weight is sitting up here almost flush with the, with the hooks, uh, with the, the, the gap in the hook, you're going to end up with a situation where that can end up inside the fish's mouth as you're, as you're trying to horse it into the boat. And it's just going to end up breaking you or, or popping it out of the mouth and wrenching it out of the mouth. And then you're going to lose that fish. So it's, it's a good thing to keep that weight suspended lower than the hook. So a good, you know, typical three aught, four aught hook. You're looking at, you know, inch and a half, two inches. You want to have your leader line to be at least three and a half, four inches. You know, something that suspends it up. Plus, the point of this rig is in soft situations, soft sandy bottoms, it'll set down. And it'll keep this bait suspended up in the water column above the grass, above that silt, out of that rock. So having it long gives you a presentation that brings you up into the fish's purview. Better chance of getting that fish to lift his belly off the bottom, bite it, and you got yourself your, your PB. So some of the variations that I did. Uh, first off, I showed you the, the typical DIY. And then I showed you the best variation that I came up with. If you don't have three ways, another variation is to take two barrel swivels. Run your, your, um, excuse me. <laughs> take two barrel swivels. Run your paper clip through the eye of both of those barrel swivels. Twist it on. Run your split ring to one of the barrel swivels that'll attach your hook and your bait and then the other barrel swivel will go off to your to your main line then you can position your weights on the bottom whatever weight you want this is a lighter rig obviously a lighter setup for more finesse um, got a little worm here but that allows that to sit down settle into the soft belly of the of the of the water your hooks presented up fish comes across bites it jobs good uh, another variation that I did 
kind of counterintuitive because this one's actually designed to get bound up was I put my hook and this is a trapper hook just because I had it but uh, any any worm hook will work but I put my hook through the um, through the paper clip and my uh, barrel swivel and the point of this was when I bent my paper clip I actually bent it up in a U and then super glued it to the shaft of the down part of the of the paper clip and this actually allows the hook to set down on that like a shelf. As this is sitting in the bottom, that is like a flagpole. It's just perfectly set up in the water to sit flush or, or parallel to the bottom. I've got my barrel swivel so I don't get line twist. Yeah, I don't have to worry about a split ring at all because my hook's directly to the paper clip and my barrel swivel is on the paper clip. So that was another variation that I've been toying around with, uh, which works pretty good. Um, another thing that you might want to want to do, and definitely for a little bit of extra sound, uh, it also allows you to set different height levels because you can pin how high your your weight's going to go. Is throw some glass beads on it and get glass beads any uh, you know any store that sells trinkets and baubles and knickknacks. You can certainly buy plastic beads from your uh, from your local bait and tackle shop. Um, the only problem with this rig is setting it in your tackle. Obviously, it's not going to fold flush, so you're going to have to have a tackle box where you can lay it out nice and straight and set it in, uh, you know, in your plano that way. Uh, but again, the point of that was so that it stays 90 to the shaft and it keeps that bait parallel to the bottom. Here's a little bit lighter setup of what I mentioned earlier, a smaller three-way spun the paper clip directly onto one side of the, th of, th of the three way my split ring to my worm hook with my little fluke bait in this case uh, small little egg sinker and two little uh, glass beads just on top just for a little flash and to pin the, the weight to the bottom uh, here is a heavier setup of the same uh, on this one I've got some stainless steel line guards uh, saltwater anglers have these I don't know if they even still make these because I'm an old school angler and I got a lot of old school stuff but I pulled these out of my old tackle box uh, just to separate the beads add a little bit more rattle as I'm punching it off the bottom I threw a big creature bait on this one because I had a big three-way so I figured what the heck um, but we'll see how that pulls uh, hoping to flip that in the, in the water shortly We'll see how this goes. <clears throat> but typically, it's an easy, easy thing to do. So we'll start off basically all you need. Again, paper clip, 55 millimeters, the best. Take a three way, inexpensive at any hardware or any uh, tackle store. Just thread that on there to start pair of pliers just because it's convenient now one thing that I do is I have this skewer it's an old wooden toothpick basically I use that just to make sure that I have a nice round uh, bend to the to the wire rather than it being bunged up and and not spin nice and, and true uh, I like to use this as just a guide to make sure that the end result is as round as possible that on there, twist it up. Also gives me leverage for twisting. Now you don't want to over tighten because you can snap the uh, you can snap the wire on the paper clips. So you just want to get it nice and tight, get it nice and round. And you're hooked up on that. Then you take fisherman's greatest friend pair of split ring pliers. Grab that split ring, open it up, throw the split ring on one of these, and your worm hook goes on it as well. So before you spin your split ring all the way around, grab your worm hook, make it convenient on yourself, and kill two birds with one stone. Pay attention to how you 
put it on. Not really. Because you're on a because you're on a permanently swiveling uh, three-way barrel of a uh, three-way swivel like this, there is no wrong way to put the hook on. You're not going to end up with it accidentally facing down, which is a common problem with people who are not paying attention when they do the the other DIY version of this, where they'll they'll put the hook on the on the split ring after putting on their barrel swivel, and then what ends up happening is they'll put it on with it facing down, and now they got to take this back off so that they can write it. With this way, there's no worries of that because it's going to be able to spin 100, uh, 360 degrees in any direction. Now, because I use the painted as opposed to, or the uh, the covered uh, vinyl covered paper clips as opposed to just the blank the blank paper clips, the one thing I do have to do in order to get things like the beads or, for example, tungsten weights, because the diameter of the inside of the weight is smaller or basically just as big as the diameter of the original paper clip and the paint or vinyl on the outside makes it makes the diameter of the paper clip too large um, what I have to do is basically come up with however high I want my weights to go and just tip off that that vinyl you know just wire clippers slides right off no big deal that allows me to put a bead, which I like to do. Again, it, it helps pin the weights from sliding around too much. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one tungsten face up. I'm going to put my bead. And I'm going to put my second tungsten weight face down. Uh, and that's going to allow a little bit of clatter. Take a little more off. A little bit more clatter to the, uh, to the sound of the bait. And sound is always a good thing to have on your rigs or on your baits. That's what attracts the fish, especially from cover or in muddier water. And then I like to just bend it just enough to keep the, the wire, to keep it on there. I don't bend it too much. And there you go. This is my personal favorite setup is you got your wire. Your tungsten weight, a bead, a tungsten weight, in this case the paper clip, that three-way swivel which gives you full maneuverability of both the weight. If it gets caught in something, you can wrench it out. It's not going to bend and get jammed up even worse. You've got full spin of the hook, so that's not going to be a problem. It keeps the, the weights below the hook's shank and below the hook's uh, gap, so you're not going to end up with this popping into the fish's mouth causing it to actually act as a fulcrum and pry that open. So it should prevent you from losing those extra, you know, couple of bites that you can bring into the boat. And then you just tie your main line onto this leftover ring and you're good to go. Any soft plastic works on this. Live bait would work on this. If you, you know, lift the shiner, just set it down there and it'll just swim, swim, swim in circles. Keep it in the strike zone. Great idea. Um, no problem, you know, no disrespect to, to Mr. Iaconelli and VMC, but why would you spend $5 on something uh, when you can spend a dollar and get the exact same quality, well, exact same fishability out of it? Maybe it's a little bit higher quality spending $5 from VMC, everything's already rigged for you, uh, and of course I'm one of those anglers, I'll go out there and buy the most expensive baits if I want to, but if I can do it at home, and if I lose it, I'm out a couple of cents. The most expensive thing is going to be the tungsten weights. So, I hope that these setups work well for you. Uh, I hope that these are a couple of different variety uh, variations that you can use uh, that might work out better than the typical DIY. Uh, again, my biggest concern uh, with the standard way that most people are showing how to do it is that split ring binding up on the hook and binding up on the weight itself causing you problems where you're going to get twisted up and hung up on a lot of cover uh, deep underwater. This gives you way more maneuverability uh, and a less likelihood of it getting caught on things because it has so much maneuverability and, and capabilities of getting out of being caught and hung up. So my version, three-way swivel, your choice of weights, paper clip, one split ring. 
Done. All right, foul mouth fishing. Like, subscribe, slam that bell notification, and share. Share. As soon as the weather picks up, I'll be out on the water fishing. I'll show you with these. I got baits out the yin yang. I have some surprises for July, uh, my birthday month. So I'll be doing something special in July. Uh, when we get to a thousand subscribers, hit that big 1,000 subscriber number that everybody attains to get, uh, you're going to see a huge uh, thank you and appreciative gift that I'm going to give out to a lucky subscriber. So you got to like, you got to subscribe, you got to share. Because the faster you share, the faster we get to a thousand, the sooner somebody's going to end up with a very, very nice gift. And it might just be you. So thank you for watching. Uh, have a good weekend. Take care.